welcome to the Sheep's Garden. I'm Elizabeth and I'm here in my yarn store. Um, today I thought I'd do a kind of different video, um, a bit of spinning. I recently bought the Ashford Country Spinner 2 spinning wheel and I'm still learning how to use it because it's different from my other wheels. Um, but I did manage to make a bit of coiled, yeah, coiled yarn. Um, not the best, but I, as a first attempt, it's not too bad. Um, but I saw someone was doing art yarns and coiled yarns on a drop spindle. And I thought that seemed kind of interesting. So yesterday, I tried to make some coiled yarn on my drop spindle. And it's not easy. It's actually quite hard. It's also hard to video because you're standing far away while you're drop spin doing the spinning and not an easy thing to do. So I thought today I would do a small video of me trying to spin this lovely wool into a coiled yarn on my drop spindle. So we'll see how it goes. To start this um, little experiment, um, looking at the one I did on my wheel, you have a kind of the core uh, yarn core thread and then you have the thicker one that goes um, around it um, and I didn't like the way this turned out because I used a kind of um, I guess a crochet thread crochet cotton and because it's white you could see it and I tried to squash it down and this kind of moves and you can, I just didn't like the way it turned out um, so what I was thinking is I would need if I wanted to spin two yarns to ply together, I would need one that's thin and one that's thick, which would mean really using two different uh, drop spindles. So I have quite a variety of drop spindles. Um, I, this is one from that someone brought me from Turkey. Um, this is also another one. Oh, we're all falling. This is also another one from Turkey. Big chunky one and. Um, this one, I believe, is from the south of Chile. I think that's where I got that one, along with this one, also from the south of Chile. Um, I think these are for spinning thick yarns, because this is really, really quite big. It's a big one. Um, and then I have some smaller ones, lighter ones from Peru. That's those. And I also have this one from around here in the north of Chile. This, I think, is what my um, husband's uh, aunt actually taught me to spin on. When I very first wanted to learn how to, eat, how to spin, I think she, she taught me with this. She showed me the basics with this. So this is the, the kind of a selection of, of spindles, of drop spindles. So what I thought is I would try and use this one, the light one, for doing the core yarn. And I think this is the heaviest one I've got, this heavy Turkish one for doing the very thick, chunky one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this kind of green turquoise for the, the thinner and this kind of mix of blues and purples for the fatter one. So I'm going to see if I can get a bit of spinning done on these and I'll come back and show you how I'm doing. are my two um, spindles with the yarn on them. Here we have the thinner yarn, which I'm going to use for the core, and the fatter one. Um, I'm going to say, I don't know if this is maybe a support spindle, or but it was very hard to spin. Or if it's, maybe it's just hard to spin thicker wools, but it was, um, it kept reversing. It didn't want to, um, which could be because it was a thick wool but um, it was hard to spin. So I'm gonna just put this and use this to kind of 
hold these kind of in place so they don't go wandering around too much. And I'm just going to push that out of over there, so they stay over there. And I'm going to use this spindle to ply them on because it's fairly heavy. Okay, I decided to shorten this video and do a voiceover because it was quite difficult trying to video the process of plying on a drop spindle on a table because there isn't the room to, to do everything like you want to do. So what I did is I actually did the spinning at the side of the table and I just gave it a bit of a spin and then I would build up a bit of twist and then here you can see I bring the the coil around the, the core yarn and get the twist in that way. So it was kind of a slow process of uh, putting a bit of twist in and then letting the yarns, pulling up on the core yarn and letting the other yarn wind its way around. But it, it worked and it's it was slower here whilst I was trying to work at the table instead of just um, working at my lap. Um, but you can see how I managed to get some of the uh, bubbles in, some of the coils. And so that's what I did. I worked a little bit at a time, got a bit of twist into it, the side, and then with the twist in, I worked my way back up, pulling on the core yarn and wrapping the other one around it. So you really need both hands when you're, when you're trying to do this kind of art yarn on a drop spindle. So you have to hold the, the spindle whilst you're working, especially with these bigger spindles, otherwise it just starts unwinding. I'm, I'm not sure, maybe it can be done whilst it's still spinning and dropping, but uh, this is the way I did it. Here's the finished uh, art yarn. Um, I found it easier to just, um, let's say, park and draft, park and ply, and I would just sit it in my lap, get the twist into it, and then slowly work with the two plies and let them wrap around the way I wanted. And that way I could control. It was quite slow though, slow going, because I had to manipulate each little bit and, and ply a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> I did have a problem that my um, core, the green, uh, broke during, um, while I was spinning. So that made um, this bit here where it's just kind of gone all, all flat and doesn't have the texture in it because it's broken somewhere there. But um, I'm going to take this off, even though I know it's going to go all twisty and it's going to unravel a bit. But we'll take this off just to see how it looks. Got some big bubbly bits in there. And it's not a lot, but it was doable. It was, I could you can actually use a drop spindle to make art yarn. It's not easy, but it is doable. So there we go. There it is at the end where I got a bit of extra, the thin bits to get it to twist. And there we go. Like I said, it's going to unravel and untwist a bit. But you can see there's some definitely some coils and with the dark green as the core yarn you don't you don't see it doesn't matter that it shows through in some of the places like it did with the the other one so I'm quite pleased with that uh, I'll have to set the twist see if it sets up maybe with the washing I'm not sure I'm, I'm kind of worried if I wash it I might uh, squash down all those little bubbles but not bad for a second attempt at spinning coils on a drop spindle. Actually, with three drop spindles. I actually needed three drop spindles to do it. So I don't know how you do it with just one. So I hope that was uh, fun to watch and may help other people who are trying to do this same thing. And we'll see you soon back here in the Sheep's Garden. Ciao.